It's kind of hard for me to put into words how big the Ninja Turtles were back when I was growing up. Huh, let me see. Oh, oh, you know a few years ago when everyone was crazy about Frozen and for a while you couldn't escape it because it was absolutely everywhere and everyone and their grandma couldn't stop talking about it? Think of that times ten. Well, maybe that's a little much. Think of that times, um, we'll say five. The Ninja Turtle phenomenon swept the world. I had the toys, I watched the cartoon, and not one recess would go by without someone making a reference or talking about the episode from the previous afternoon. And when the live-action movie was announced, you could forget anything else being talked about in the cafeteria during lunch. That is, of course, except for one other topic of discussion. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. So with a build-up like that, how is the game? Well, hard. The game is hard. In fact, it has the reputation for being one of the most difficult in NES history. Easily in the top 10, if not top 5. And given all the other games on the console, that's really saying something. But what really makes it hard? Is it the bosses? Not really. The Technodrome isn't that difficult if you have the right weapons. The Giant Mouser isn't hard if you just stand underneath them. And come on, who didn't do that trick when fighting Rocksteady, where you stand on the crates and just hit him with Donatello's bow staff? Now, honestly, for me, the difficult part is in the level designs. Like when you have to make those close call jumps that have to be absolutely perfect. And that's not even the worst part about them. It's the fact that if you miss them, especially in the sewers, you're sent back outside and have to go through the level all over again, completely draining your life bar. And then, of course, there's the water level, where if you touch this pink seaweed, you lose life. And I swear, it is impossible to get past this point without getting shocked at least twice. And this is something I've always wondered about. The turtles are clearly swimming in this level, so why when you miss a jump in the sewers can't they just swim out of the water and try again? Maybe the current is too strong. However, if there is one constant to this game, is that I still to this day have never met anyone who could make it all the way to Shredder. You could start the hashtag, never made it to Shredder, and I guarantee, I guarantee, it will be trending by several 90s kids who never made it to their favorite kitchen utensil inspired villain. Yeah, this was the subject of discussion way back when. It got to the point where you would yell out on the playground, hey, have you made it to Shredder? And they would always respond with, heck no! It was then that Shredder had become kind of an urban legend in the video game. We all heard about him and knew he was at the end of the game, but no one had ever made it to the end to see him. I mean, you have to remember, this was before YouTube, and the internet for that matter, so you couldn't just look it up. Thus, if you were actually good enough to make it to Shredder, you instantly would become the most popular kid at school. You would become like Lucas from The Wizard times 12, an Omega Lucas, if you will. So I could never do it, but thanks to the internet, I finally saw the Shredder battle for myself, and then learned that there was this trick where you could beat him with no trouble. Huh. It's kind of like when you meet your heroes, and they're not what you expect them to be. After all those years of mystery, and Shredder goes out like a wuss. Just like in the first movie. Oh, and the second movie, I guess. <sighs> Excuse me, I have to go reevaluate my childhood. After all this time, thinking you're gonna be an epic battle, and I... I just can't.